What's up? What's up? Billy Carson here, aka Forbidden Knowledge. Make sure you share this video. We're going to talk a little bit tonight about the Emerald tablets, but I have a special announcement about the last two tablets. So make sure you share the video and make sure you tell everyone that Billy Carson is live right now. If you're watching me over here, I'm live, live, live. Make sure you let everybody know that we're getting ready to talk about the Emerald tablets. I'll be right back. What's up? What's up? Billy Carson with a pop-up podcast, a.k.a. Forbidden Knowledge. I'm just going to pop in and talk to you guys. Got to share a little bit of wisdom and knowledge with you all uh, tonight. Uh, just a, not going to be on too long tonight, but I'm going to share some wisdom and share some knowledge and talk to you about a brand new upcoming private VIP class that I'm going to teach about the final two discovered tablets of the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. All right. Welcome everyone here also behind the scenes. It's going to be an amazing talk tonight. Let me get into the live chat here and see what's going on. I see everybody dialing in. Make sure you share this uh, video with everybody you possibly can. Make sure you click the like button. Make sure you subscribe. If you're over here on TikTok, please make sure you subscribe or follow this account. All right. Somebody says they can't hear me. Let me turn the sound on over here for the other guys. All right. Okay, there we go over here. Now you guys can hear me. Um, so anyway, if, in case you didn't know, there are two tablets that were basically uh, banned to the world, right? And so let me break it down a little bit. This is what this is the upcoming workshop that I'm getting ready to do. It's going to be a super VIP private workshop. I'm not going to take that many people in this workshop. So you have to register ASAP. The Emerald Tablets translated in the work are 10. Okay. But they were divided into 13 parts for the sake of convenience. So they took the 10, they took the 13 tablets and broke it down into 10 because of the way that the verses were written out. It just made it easier to put it into a canonized book. So that's why they did that way. The last two are so great and far reaching in their import that for thousands of years, it was forbidden to release them to the world at large. Okay. So we're talking about the final two tablets of the Emerald Tablets of both the plural tablets, because there's two versions of the Emerald Tablets. There's an Emerald Tablet of Hermes, which is singular one, which is located in Cambridge at the Cambridge uh, University in the UK. Anyone can go there and actually see it with their own eyes. And then the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, which were written between 36 to 38,000 years ago, are actually in the Vatican archive now. That's where they reside after being rediscovered uh, and brought back to Egypt. Uh, in the 1920s so there are two tablets that they say were so far reaching in their import in other words the amount of knowledge and wisdom in these last two tablets that it was forbidden to release them to the world at large that's pretty interesting i'm actually going to break down and decipher these tablets so i've already done it i've extracted additional wisdom these last two tablets even I hadn't fully deciphered them 
at the time that I wrote the book Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. But it's taking me now four additional, actually almost four and a half additional years to break these tablets down and to extract the wisdom and the understanding. And what I, what I pulled out of these tablets is mind boggling and absolutely paradigm shifting. So it's amazing because a lot of people have been trying to break them down, get the full understanding, but it's only been a surface understanding uh, from some of these authors and researchers. I've been able to fully extract the information. So I'm going to drop the link here uh, to this workshop. It's going to be a super VIP interactive private class that I'm going to do. I'm going to drop the link in the chat right now in the live chat. If you're watching over here on TikTok, it's the link in my bio. Okay, you'll be able to find the link in my bio. And uh, it's going to be a special, special event coming up in just a couple of weeks at the end of this month. I'm going to spend four hours with you. And you're going to learn something that less than one-tenth of one percent of the people on planet Earth actually know. Less than one-tenth of one percent of the people on planet Earth will ever hear this at least in this particular time frame. Over time, it will grow and expand as we continue to break down and, um, and push the knowledge out. But the reason why I'm doing it in a workshop format is because people need to take the time to be really serious. I don't want people just hopping on and, and you know, cooking dinner and feeding dogs and working on their, their kids' homework while they're trying to listen to me give groundbreaking, universe-shifting information. I need people to be completely dedicated to the knowledge and the wisdom for those particular four hours. I need them sitting down, full attention, ready, to, ready, ready and willing to learn about what I have to teach. I don't want people going, oh, let me run outside. I got to take care of this. Oh, I got to Uber Eats. Let me stuff this down my throat while he's. I'm listening to him in the back. It's, no, it's too serious for that kind of nonchalant um, application. It's just too serious. It's too serious. All right. So the link is in the bio on all of my accounts. And it also is, um, uh, it's, it's in my uh, bio on TikTok. It's in my chat, live, my live chat and um, caption on YouTube. Right. And so I highly recommend it. And I'm going to teach it in that format. It's just too, too powerful, right? Too powerful. I'm going to read something to you that both said, and then I'm going to read a little bit from the Emerald Tablets and give you guys some wisdom and some knowledge. I'm going to break a few things down for you, okay? Let me just uh, delete this here real quick on this other screen here. Okay. I got that. Now... Let me go back to this other window. I want to read something that's really potent and powerful so you can understand the era and the time that we're living in and how powerful it is right now that we're in this time and space at this exact moment and that we are the chosen ones. We all are the chosen ones. Let me read something to you that was written 38,000 years ago. Wise words, although written by my decaying hand. This is Thoth speaking right now, the first intelligencer, the most wisest man to ever walk this planet, the one that helped kickstart civilizations around the entire planet, all over the world, in every region of the planet. He has his influence there. He says, wise words, although written by my decaying hand, remain imperishable through time, imbued with the medicine of immortality by the all master. He was taught the secrets of immortality by the all master who actually was his father, Ia Enki, AKA thought me. He said, be unseen and be undiscovered by all those who will come and go, wandering the wastelands of life. See, now I'm gonna read this again to you, but let me break that down. What he's saying here is, the knowledge and wisdom, that, for example, that I've gained in these last two tablets that I'm going to share with the people, I'm not going to give it out to people who are wandering the wastelands of life. I'm not going to give it out to people that are just nonchalantly 
uh, you know, trying to get this information because they don't take it that serious or it just happens to be running on a YouTube account or just happens to be running randomly somewhere else. This is why I'm doing it in a workshop format. He says, be unseen and undiscovered. In other words, this is VIP. This is secret. This is private. By all those who will come and go wandering the wastelands of life. He says, be hidden until an older heaven births human beings who are worthy of your wisdom. We are under a new heaven based on the uh, celestial alignment, right? The procession of the equinox as the star constellations move across the sky over 27,000 years, right? We're under a new heaven at this exact moment in time right now. He's saying is, be hidden until an older heaven, we're in the older heaven right now, births human beings, that's us, who are worthy of your wisdom. Again, that's us. There are a select few individuals that are worthy of this wisdom, and they will take the time to be a part of this amazing workshop that I'm putting on uh, in just a few days, all right? This is powerful, powerful stuff, and it's extremely important, and it's the reason why I'm doing it in a workshop format because it's that important that it's done that way because I'm listening to the master. And the master says, do not waste energy and do not waste time giving this information to people who are wandering the wastelands of life, who are casually and nonchalantly trying to accept the wisdom and the knowledge. Now, let me read it to you without stopping. Wise words, although written by my decaying hand, remain imperishable through time, imbued with the medicine of immortality by the all master. Be unseen and undiscovered by all those who will come and go, wandering the wastelands of life. Be hidden until an older heaven births human beings who are worthy of your wisdom. We are the human beings under the new heaven at this moment in time. And we are worthy of the wisdom because we are willing to invest energy and effort into gaining the knowledge. We are living in the era where we can decipher the information. This information has been undecipherable for eons. Imagine how lucky you are right now to be alive at this very moment, to be able to be in a position to actually discern information that was written for you tens of thousands of years ago you have met that information went out as a ripple in space time right it went out as a ripple in space time waiting to meet up with consciousness that can discern it in the future time period and it has now intersected with us here in this exact moment in this exact time this is how powerful this information is we're at a crucial pivotal point right now in human history where all the secrets are being revealed. All of the secrets are being revealed. But you must become an adept initiate. You see, in the original mystery schools, you weren't allowed to just show up at a place where there were teaching was going on. It didn't work that way. Okay? You had to literally be invited to show up. You had to become an adept initiate. And that's really what it's all about. Now I'm giving you an opportunity to gain this knowledge and to gain this wisdom. All right. And how will you do that? You'll join this workshop. I'll drop the link in the chat one more time. Of course, like, like I said before, the link is in my bio. You can also go to eventbrite.com and just type in Billy Carson and all my events pop up. But this is the Emerald Tablet event. What's interesting about this The power of the information that you're going to be given is going to be legacy building and powering information. We're going to be going over the secret of secrets. The secret of secrets. And it's going to be broken down in a way you've never heard before. It's tablet 15. It's a supplemental tablet. This tablet teaches the ascension to the God man by receiving the Ba the BA, the Ba, as well as the yin and yang nature of the universe and how it relates to entropy and other forms of chaos. As a wise teacher once said, I'm not teaching you how to fight evil. 
I'm teaching you how to control it. I'm not teaching you how to fight evil. I'm teaching you how to control it. This is this is going to be a powerful session. This is a powerful four hours. I'm inviting you to come and spend four hours with me on a special VIP workshop. Okay, I'm only going to have probably, I don't know, maybe 40 or 50 people in there. So if you want to get in, you better register ASAP because it'll be fully interactive. And I'll be answering a lot of questions at the end. All right. Another part we'll be going over is a supplemental tablet, which will be supplemental tablet number 14. Another once hidden tablet from mankind for thousands of years. And I'll be breaking down the supplemental tablet number 14. Okay. As you come into the age of light, worlds will open that you never knew existed. And we're going to break it down. And the knowledge that's in here can shift. Wars will come to an end. Poverty will come to an end. Suffering will come to an end. All right. That's what's getting ready to happen. It's next level. As a prequel to that, let me go over a couple of things with you here, just so you can understand how powerful these tablets really are. And again, right now I'm in the book, Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. Let me get over here to this page. I was just reading something that just, every now and then when I go back in, I'm probably on my third, 300 the 400th time of going through this book. I call every 100 one. So every 100 times I go through the Emerald Tablets, I call it a number one. 100 times is one. Okay, here we go. Just looking for this one section here. Both said, build it I the Great Pyramid. What's this thing talking about over here? Live. TikTok is asking me all kinds of crazy questions while I'm talking. Both said, build it I the Great Pyramid, pattern after Earth's force, so that it too might remain through the ages. He's talking about the fact that he built the Great Pyramid in a way where it can actually withstand the test of time. I want to answer this quick question. Hagar Salmon says, what does the Quran say about the Anunnaki? The Anunnaki and the Quran, are, the Anunnaki are in the Quran. These beings that are being interacting with Muhammad, they're not angels from this magical heaven. Those are people, flesh and blood people that put their pants on one leg at a time that actually need assistance because the angel that came down to talk to, the angel Gabriel that came down to talk to Muhammad said, hey, I got a, I came from heaven to earth. I came from down there, down here. I need you to help me out. Can you write down this information I'm about to speak to you? Muhammad says, man, I'm illiterate. I can't even read or write. I got to go find somebody else to help me. Then he goes and finds somebody else to help him write down. So it's coming from the from the angel, which is a what the which is an alien, into his ear. And then he's got to speak it then back down to another person to get it all written down. And these beings that all talked about in there, including the God of the Bible of the Quran, same person, Yahweh, is all talking about the Anunnaki. It doesn't mean that there's nothing good in the Quran. It doesn't mean that there's anything not good, I should say. There's good information in the Quran. There's good information in the Bible. There's good information in all biblical texts and all religious texts from all around the world. However, you have to come to the realization that we're talking about aliens at the end of the day. I wrote about this in this book, as a matter of fact. All religions believe in aliens and just still don't know about it. You see? All religions believe in aliens, but still don't understand that's what they're doing. Let me see if I can find that right quick and cover that topic for you in, a, in, a, in a, as brief as I can before I go into what I was getting ready to get into. But this is important. I'm glad he asked me that question. It's so important for everyone to understand. 
that <laughs> that the religious system itself is primarily about alien intervention and alien activity being engaged by aliens. What is an alien? A being that's not from this world. That's what an alien is. Let's see here. I want to get to that page because that's an important question. This is one of the older versions of my book when it was before it was rearranged into volume two, which is now what's actually on Amazon. So the pages are in a little bit of different, different arrangement. But I want to get to that because it's really a great question. See if I could find it right quick. So you have to ask yourself, what is an alien? An alien, according to the definition in the dictionary, is a person from another country or what else is it? Or it's also a being from outer space. That's the actual dictionary uh, words for, for that. That's what it says in the dictionary. So with that definition, you then apply it to everything. And what do you get? You find out all religions say that they're worshiping a being that's not from this world, not of this world. And there's no way to get around that. There's no way to hide it. There's no way to try to say, well, no, 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 it's not what it means. And, and so forth and so on. You can't do that. Let me pull it up over here because I got to pull it up on my, my newer version of the book. And so you can't do that because why? We're talking about the fact that the person who told you to pray to them and the angels and so forth told you, I'm not of this world. Another thing you got to realize when you're dealing with this, you got to realize that these angels always need clothing. They have sex with the people, with the humans. Right? What are angels doing needing to have sex with humans? Why is that? Why would an angel need to have sex? Why are angels having sex with humans? Why are angels teaching humans how to make weapons? Why are angels teaching humans how to brew beer and make beer? And why are they drinking with the humans and also getting drunk with the humans? Why would they be doing that? Why would they be doing that? Right? Because guess what? They are people. <laughs> I'm not saying angels don't exist. What I'm telling you is the ones in these books, they're not divine beings. All right, pull it up here from the volume number two of the book. Virtually all religions either worship aliens. This is from my book, Compendium of the Emerald Chapters, version two, volume two. Virtually all religions either worship aliens or believe in aliens, and they don't even know it. Let's have a look at the definition of alien. A resident born in or belonging to another country or an entity from outer space. Now that the definition is clear, let's take a look at some of its largest religions and uh, of the largest religions and their origins. Christianity. 2.1 billion people worship Jesus. Well, he says in John 8.23... And he said unto them, you are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world, I'm not from earth. Islam, 1.3 billion people believe that the prophet Muhammad was meditating in a cave of Hira by himself when the angel Gabriel, who said they, that, that it was not from earth, descended and came down from above to him and told him to recite the Ikra, the words of God even though the prophet Muhammad was illiterate at the time. He was illiterate. Hinduism. 851 million Hindus hold that the cosmos is populated by numerous deities and spiritual beings, gods and goddesses or divas, who actually influence the world and who interact with humans and say that they're not from Earth. Aliens. Buddhism. 375 million People are in Buddhist. Deities, they say, are certain branches of a larger Buddhist tradition, including the Mahayana, include a variety of gods and goddesses that say they're not from Earth. Aliens. 
Mormons, 13.5 million people say that the angel Moroni, who's not from Earth, according to Angel Moroni, not from Billy Carson, is um, in Mormonism an angel that visited Joseph Smith on numerous occasions beginning on September 21st, 1823. According to Smith, the angel was the guardian of the golden plates, which the Latter-day Saints believe were the source material for the Book of Mormon that were buried in a hill near Smith's home in western New York. People kickstarted a whole religion from this alien, alien invasion, this alien interaction, okay, and created Mormonism. So like I said before, virtually all religions believe in aliens or worship aliens and don't even know it, aren't even paying attention and being aware of it, you see? So what does that mean? We have to wake up and smell the coffee. We have to realize what's going on here. I just had a reverend on my podcast, okay, just the other day. That's Paul Wallace. He's a four times best-selling author. And this man has come to a complete realization after 33 years in the clergy that these people are aliens and that there is a God, just like I believe there's a God, but the God that we both believe exists is not written in these religious texts. Those are people who are manipulating other people, people with advanced wisdom that utilize that advanced wisdom and that advanced knowledge to put their boot on other people's necks. The things that they're capable of doing appear to be magical because they had advanced technology in the ancient past. And the people who didn't have advanced technology thought they were gods and worshiped them. It's called a cargo cult, period, point blank. There's no way to get around it. There's no way to get around it. Let me get back to what I was getting ready to talk to you about real quick. Um, by the way, let me drop this link in the chat one more time over here. The link is in my bio. All right. And I just saw somebody drop a big note here to me. Let's see what this is talking about. This this chat's moving so doggone fast uh, on YouTube. Uh, Terrence Tech, he wants to know about uh, getting his books, getting his book uh, listed on uh, Amazon. Keep getting errors. Okay, Terrence, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, give me two days to come up with another pop-up co podcast, and I'll teach you guys specifically how to put your own book and publish your own book on Amazon in the way that I do it to make the majority and the most money. All right? So I'll take care of that for you, and I'll teach you guys exactly how to do it step by step. I can't get this thing to get off the screen. It's coming back and coming off. There it goes. It's going to delay in this computer. I'll do a pop-up podcast. I'll give you guys a free some free information on how to become your own publishing company. All right. All right, here we go. This is what I want to get to. Both said, build it out of the Great Pyramid, pattern after the pyramid of Earth's force, burning eternally so, so that it too might remain through the ages. In it, I build it my knowledge of magic science. What does magic science mean in ancient text? When you see the term, the phrase magic science, they're talking about advanced technology. That's what that means. And how do I know this? Because when you read enough text about that phrase, magic science, you begin to realize that after that phrase, they begin to talk about uh, things that sound technological that are stunning other people, that are making other people bow and grovel at their feet because they see these signs and wonders. But what's ac actually happening is they're showing them some technological devices that they have and the people are like wowed by them, right? So it's a you know, pattern of the Earth's force, burning so that it too might remain through the ages, building in it my magic, my knowledge of magic science. And I'm gonna talk about some of that magic science in a second here. The Great Pyramid is encoded with super advanced technology and mathematics. Let's take a look at some of the wisdom that Thoth encoded into the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid is a massive wireless power plant, and this is just one of many multifunctional purposes 
of this gigantic stone computer that's here on Earth. The Great Pyramid is not just a pyramid. It was never a tomb, by the way. Not once was it ever a tomb. It's a gigantic multifunctional stone computer and power generator. That's what it is. Based on actual engineers that have researched this pyramid and come to the understanding that it generates wireless electricity. If you look at the Great Pyramid, before I go on to some of these dimensions, if you look at the Great Pyramid and how it's actually built, let me put this bookmark in here, you'll see that it's built on top of an aquifer. Now the aquifer is dried out right now because of the Nile being moved, meandering far and far away. Why is the Nile not close to the pyramids anymore like it was in ancient times? Well, just read about the Second Pyramid War and you'll find out why. That area is a, that area is a desert because it was decimated. It's not a desert because natural geological processes over millions of years turned it into a desert. That's baloney. That area was completely decimated by a blast. When I go to Egypt, which I'm going in just another week and a half, I'll be there again for a whole month. When you go out to the sands of Giza, when you put your hand in the mud and come up, I'm, I'm sorry, you put your hand in the sand, I'm sorry, and come up, you begin to get in your hand a lot of different things like seashells and uh, other types of fossils that let you know that there was water there at one time. Also, sometimes you get these clumps of glass. Why am I getting glass from sand? In order to turn sand into glass, you need temperatures of 3,000 degrees. 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit to get clumps of actual glass. That's pretty interesting, you see? Pretty interesting. So what that means is we're looking at a situation where there was a blast of some sort. And in my new TV series, Anunnaki History, which is going to be airing exclusively on Forbidden Knowledge TV, we're filming, we're in the filming stages now for the new series. You'll see where I show you evidence of this war and evidence of this blast. And you'll see what I'm talking about in that TV series, right? Now, this water runs underneath the pyramid, and when water runs underneath uh, crystal magnetized granite, which is what the base is made out of, it generates something called physiostatic electricity. Now, that physiostatic electricity moves up positive ions up into the grand gallery. Now, in the grand gallery, there used to be resonating rods, and the slots for those rods are there, but the rods themselves have been taken out. They're missing. Those rods would step up the amperage up into the king's chamber, and then the king's chamber would magnify it from there and shoot it through the apex. At the gold capstone, which has now also been removed, would then shoot that wireless electricity around the region, and the solid magnetized crystal obelisks that are in that region would capture that ambient electricity and channel it down to the ground, where if you had a jet, a DJED, which are well known throughout the land of Egypt because they're in almost every hieroglyph, these jets. The jet has a cable coming out of it. There's a famous image of a jet with a wire coming out of it connected to a light bulb at the Temple of Dendera. So what's happening there is you're seeing them harness wireless electricity, just like Nikola Tesla did with the Wardenclyffe Tower. As a matter of fact, Nikola Tesla said he learned the secret of wireless electricity from the ancient Egyptians. He didn't come up with that idea originally. He copied what he knew already existed. That's just one function and one purpose of the Great Pyramid. The second and uh, most important function of the Great Pyramid besides electricity was the secrets hidden in the dimensions of the pyramid itself, which I'm gonna cover these dimensions with you right now. Before I do that, I wanna um, show you guys something real quick here. Um, you won't be able to see this here on TikTok, but I'm showing on YouTube, this quick thing. So right now we're having a special, I gotta take a quick commercial break. So right now we're having a, an incredible opportunity for you on Forbidden Knowledge TV. We're giving away a Bentley Continental convertible. We've given away a Ford, Sport, Ford GT Sport. We've given away a Rolls Royce Ghost in 2022. 
We've given away an Audi A4 just a few weeks ago at the Conscious Awards to somebody live at the actual event. And now we're going to give away a convertible uh, Bentley Continental. And how you qualify to get this car is three things. The first thing is you subscribe to Forbidden Knowledge TV. The link is in my bio on this account. It's 4BK.TV. So you have to be an active subscriber to qualify. It's only going to go to a subscriber of the network. The second thing is uh, you will you will actually go and watch 10 shows. The 10 shows are listed on the sign-up form. So this form, after you become a subscriber, you'll get emailed a link. On that link, there'll be different TV shows and gems will be in those sections. You have to listen, watch the show and find those gems and give me the timestamps. You're going to fill it out on this form, a web form. And then the third thing is you have to be an active subscriber for four months. So this actual contest comes to an end March 19th, 2024. And March 20th, 2024, we're going to do the drawing of all the people that successfully subscribed and answered those 10 questions with 10 timestamps. And you could be the winner of a convertible Bentley Continental. You can take that car and you can sell it. It's up to you. You're going to get a clear title. You can take that car and you can rent it out as an exotic car rental and make it make money for you. You can take that car uh, and you can keep it if you want and drive it around. You can do whatever you want, right? If you sell the car, you can invest the money into real estate or whatever you want. You can invest in yourself, build your business, uh, whatever. It's up to you. But that's the options. And that's uh, those are the contest rules. So I'm going to play this quick commercial for the Bentley uh, giveaway coming up here. And just uh, we just launched actually a few hours ago. We literally just launched uh, the uh, the Bentley giveaway just a few hours ago. All right. So it's an amazing car. Let's have a look at this car. Let's see if we got it here. Is this the car? Let me see if this is it here. So that is the commercial for the uh, uh, the Forbidden Knowledge Bentley Continental Convertible Giveaway. Like I said, you have to subscribe to be able to win. If you're not a subscriber, you won't be entered. If you are a subscriber, look for an email from us with a link to fill out the questionnaire so that you can be entered to win this car. There's nothing else for you to do other than that. Okay, And we will ship this car anywhere in the world. It's anywhere in the world we will ship the car, okay, at our expense. I'm going to drop the link in the chat right here for you right now, all right? And uh, make sure you go like and subscribe. And make sure when you get that email from us, you complete the email to be entered to win that brand new convertible Bentley. It's an amazing car. All right, you just saw a little commercial that I was in that car dropping the re dropping the remote uh, dropping the uh, the convertible. It's an amazing car in phenomenal condition. Yeah, you're gonna love it. All right, you're going to love it. Anyway, let me get back to these dimensions now that you know about that. Somebody says, Billy, are you a millionaire? I'm a billionaire. All right, now, so let's go here. Um, and to answer that question, I'm not being smart, but I, I I sold my first company. Somebody was asking if I was a millionaire. I sold my, uh, my my first sale of a company, not my first company, but a, a company that I built and sold for the first time I ever sold a company. I've sold many companies, but the first one was in, in 2004. I formed that company in 1997, dot-com marketing group. I built it into a multi-million dollar dot-com, and I, I, I was acquired initially in 2004 by Globebench Systems, uh, maintained a specific level of ownership, and then eventually we uh, sold out to another co company who was on NASDAQ. And I did my exit with millions of dollars, I took millions of dollars out, took seven or eight years off and just trained my kids, played with my kids, started sports programs in, in Western Florida, built a YMCA and, and all kind of stuff. So 
And that just led into new project after new project. And I've, since then, I've made multi, multi millions of dollars in businesses outside of anything dealing with social media. And some people think, you know, I made millions of dollars selling T-shirts on social media. I love, I've got these hats and these T-shirts, these T-shirts and hats. and will not sell enough for me to make multi millions of dollars, at least not at this point. Uh, I'm doing this because of pure passion. Uh, but Forbidden Knowledge TV is a multi-million dollar company that is eventually going to be on NASDAQ. I'm building this one and I'm going to stay in this one. I'm not selling this company. So if you want to be a part of something amazing, make sure you subscribe to Forbidden Knowledge TV. And when we open up round three of funding, make sure you become an investor and buy yourself some shares because we're on the way all the way up. All right. Now let's talk about, about these pyramids. So we were talking about the fact that the pyramid is encoded with a lot of information, right? It's a multifunctional stone computer. One of the most amazing things about this, and I'll drop the link again while people are asking about the link to uh, the uh, subscription base for 4BK.TV. It's 4BK.TV. It's just a very simple link, all right, to find that, subscribe, click on the subscribe button, make sure you subscribe, and you'll be getting an email uh, where it'll give you a link to actually register for the Bentley. Now, let's check this out. Earth's mass can be calculated by the dimensions of the stones in the Great Pyramid. Isn't that pretty interesting? You see, the Great Pyramid itself is a time capsule of information left behind for the people of this current era today. It's for us. It's for us, the ones here now, the blessed ones. We are the chosen ones to be able to understand and break down this knowledge. The mass of the pyramid equals the volume times density. So you take the total mass of the pyramid, which is 2 million, and it equals the volume times the density. So the volume times the density gives you an incredible mathematical number. It gives you the math, the mass converted to pyramid tons. It gives you the mass of the earth converted into pyramid tons, which is 5,272,010 pyramid tons. Since the mean density of the earth was defined as 1.0, then the mass of the earth is 10 to the 15th power times the mass in the pyramid tons. It's going to give you that same exact calculation all over again. So we understand now in one way, at least, and there's another way. I'm going to just break this down so you can understand it. The Great Pyramid itself is a representation of the mass of planet Earth. And you can calculate it two different ways, meaning it's not a coincidence. You can also calculate the speed of the Earth around the sun. The pyramid inch times 10 to the eighth power equals the speed of the Earth around the sun circa 2600 BCE. So this is pretty interesting. When you look at the speed of the Earth in 2600 BCE around the sun, which, you know, the, the, the Earth's speed changes ever so slightly over time, we know that it matches that perfectly. The mass of the Earth can be calculated. The weight of the pyramid is approximately 5,955,000 tons. Multiplied by 10 to the 8 gives a reasonable estimate of Earth's mass. So again, a third way to calculate the mass of the Earth via the pyramid. Another thing that's interesting about the Great Pyramid, it's a 43,200 scale of planet Earth. So if you take the Earth and scale it down 43,200 times, you can take the Great Pyramid exactly as it sits there, and it will fit perfectly inside the planet Earth. Or you can scale that Great Pyramid up 43,200 times, and it fits perfectly inside the sphere of the Earth, touching all corners. You see? So the Great Pyramid itself, it is a representation of the planet. Here's something interesting. You can calculate the average land height. The average height of land above sea level for the Earth is 5,449 inches. That's also the height of the Great Pyramid. Now, let me explain this to you. <laughs> In order to calculate the height of land mass on the planet so you can build your pyramid to that height, you need 
a satellite. You need an Earth orbiting satellite. And why do you need that? Because you need a satellite that's orbiting in a polar orbit from pole to pole so that as Earth spins on its axis, you can scan swaths of the land and you can take topographical data. Without topographical data, you can't discover all the peaks above sea level. So now that you're taking this scan of the Earth as it rotates on its axis, pole to pole, you're calculating all of the peaks as you're doing the topography. Now you take the height of those peaks and then you divide them by the number of peaks and you get the average height, which is gonna be 5,449. It took me eight years to do all these calculations. So now what does that mean? That means that they had technology. What they're telling us here is they had something that orbited the planet from pole to pole that had the capability of scanning the planet as it rotated so that they can get, come up with all the height of all the peaks on Earth and then say, okay, boom, now we're going to make the pyramid this height so that they can know in the future, they meaning us, because I'm telling you right now, how smart we were, how intelligent we were, the technology we had. We were able to now reverse think the process needed to come up with this calculation and realize, wow, we didn't invent satellites. They already existed. The light equation, the height of the Great Pyramid minus the height of the capstone represents one millionth the time it takes for light to travel the mean radius of the Earth's orbit around the sun, which is one AU, one astronomical unit in astrophysics. Using one pyramid inch equals 24 hours, which is one solar day. By that method, you can calculate the speed of light. So the pyramid has a capability of calculating the speed of light, not just one way, but also two ways. This is just one of two, meaning we have circumstantial evidence that it's not a coincidence. And all these people talking about flat Earth, the Earth isn't flat, and there is atmosphere, okay? Anybody who's listening to that flat Earth, flat earth garbage has been completely brainwashed and has, has had their brain sucked out of their skull. Anybody with basic knowledge of basic physics will tell you and know that we're living on, on, on a spherical planet. The flat earth is a CIA psyop uh, literally released on us to create divide and conquer, number one, and also to create misinformation in the conscious community. And unfortunately, it's worked on 98% of the population of black people. In other words, 98% of the, not the population, but 98% of the people that believe the earth is flat are black. They're not white. Why is that? Why is that? It's a targeted misinformation project targeted towards black people, admittedly by the CIA. And you're falling for it nonstop. All these black people running around, the earth is flat, the earth is flat. They're so obsessed with it, they become zealots that they, everywhere they go, if somebody's talking about kittens, the earth is flat. They're telling the kitten the earth is flat. It's completely gotten them completely obsessed. It's destroyed their brains. And these are obviously people that don't know and understand basic physics. I remember this one guy was talking to me, and I said, listen, what atmospheric gases are you breathing in right now? He said, we're not breathing in. There is no gas. There is no atmosphere. I said, really? Would you like me to withdraw all the atmosphere from this room so that you said doesn't exist and let me know how, how that works for you? <laughs> I said, what gases are you breathing? Well, we're breathing oxygen. I said, well, oxygen is actually a gas. Oxygen is a gas. Oxygen is a gas, G-A-S. It's part of the atmosphere. And if you breathe in 100% oxygen, you're gonna be dead. You can't breathe in 100% oxygen, not for too long. You're only breathing in 21% oxygen. Our atmosphere contains 21% oxygen. Then you have other gases like helium and argon and, and krypton and all these other gases that you're breathing in. But you're not breathing in 100% oxygen. If you think that, oh, I just breathed in oxygen, pure oxygen, you don't know anything. <laughs> you haven't studied anything. We got to become smarter, man.
especially black people. We got to we got to start thinking. We got to start realizing when we hear stuff that's fantasiful, we got to stop just believing in it so wholeheartedly like we did Christianity and everything else that they give us. We just swallow things hook, line and sinker. And we run with it and we start blabbing to everybody about it like we like like it's the like it's the gospel. And then look at us. We're the last ones in. We're the last of all the people on planet Earth. We're la- we're in last place still to this day. We're trying to catch up, but we're in last place. We got a lot of learning to do. And I'm going to tell it to you like it is because I'm forbidden knowledge. And I don't give a damn. <laughs> OK, I don't give a damn. And ain't nobody going to stop me. Now, like I was saying before, before I got distracted by the flat garbage, let's get back to intelligence. Let's make intelligence the new cool. Let's make researching and studying the new cool and not listening to propaganda and fake news. All right. Now, check this out. This is pretty interesting stuff. The velocity of light with distance of one AU known as the transit of time of light for this same distance, the velocity of light can be found. The velocity of light is the distance of one AU known and the transit time of light for this time and distance, the velocity of light can be found. So we're talking about here now, we're getting into the numeric part. So um, there's some more numbers in here. I don't want to get too many big numbers because I'll be speaking a lot of numbers you won't understand. But let me break it down this way. Inside the Grand Gallery, Going up to the king's chamber, there is uh, this area that's open leading up in this particular angle towards the king's chamber. It is located at, at a specific longitude. And that longitude it are the same digits and numbers for the speed of light in meters per second. And say, wait a minute, meters per second? How in the world can we have the speed of light in meters per second calculated into an ancient structure when meters meters didn't exist back then. Wrong. <laughs> Is that what they taught you in school too? That meters didn't exist back in the day in ancient times? That's fake news. How do we know this? Guess what? There are some famous proto-Sumerian vases, vases and, and tablets that were discovered Sumerian, but guess where they were discovered? In Mexico. There's even a Wikipedia, and I don't even love Wikipedia, but even Wikipedia can't lie about this one. And guess what was written on them? An ancient metric system. So we know the metric system is thousands of years old. It even predates the the uh, the modern the modern version of or the newer version of Sumerian. It's proto pre Sumerian. And to give more credence to the fact that Sumerian tablets were in America, they found a Native American chief buried in a burial mound. And when they opened the burial mound, in his pocket was a Sumerian tablet. Look up Chief Joseph Sumerian tablet. Just Google Chief Joseph Sumerian tablet. You'll find out that he had a Sumerian tablet in America in his pocket. Now, how'd that get there? You see, because this was a global civilization. The Great Pyramid is also at the center of land mass on Earth. Not the center of Earth, the center of the land mass on Earth. I don't know if you, if your brain can calculate how hard that is to do. That's pretty tough. That's pretty, pretty tough because, again, you need advanced technology. So what they're telling us over and over again in these calculations that we've been uncovering is that, okay, new wisdom keepers, now that you have decoded the mysteries, what we're showing you is our advanced technology, our ability to do this and how we used it. How, how were we able to do it? You must extrapolate that we use advanced technology because that's the only way you'd be able to do it today. In order to calculate, calculate the the landmass on Earth, you need a polar orbiting satellite. Any astrophysicist will agree with this. Any astrophysicist will conclude that you need a polar orbiting satellite because that's how we do it today. You have a polar orbiting satellite scanning the planet as it, or- as it spins on its axis. And then from there, you're able to calculate the, uh, 
the center of land mass. And when you find the center of land mass, you drop a pyramid directly on that spot. Okay. That's how you do it. I don't know if my screen is freezing or if I'm freezing. It looked like I froze. Let me fix this. Hold on, guys. This thing is tripping. Let me see if I can unfreeze myself on this YouTube. Let me see, how can I unfreeze this thing? It's gotta be the way to do it. Uh, let me see, one second, just, just two. Yeah, it's smoking. I'm going to drop the link over here one more time. Guys, this computer is smoking. I'm going to drop the link over here for you guys. You understand the power. Yeah, somebody said we can hear you, but the picture keeps freezing. I know. I'm going to drop the link in here for you guys one last time, and then make sure you guys click that link and make sure you register ASAP. All right? And I'll see you all in a couple of weeks for hours super vip you don't want to miss it it's going to be mind-blowing it's going to be amazing you guys thanks for hanging out with me over here on tiktok i appreciate y'all uh you know i'm trying to give you the behind the scenes <laughs> behind the scenes action the good the bad the ugly you see the you know the, the technical difficulties and everything else that's going on but thanks for hanging out i appreciate it um trying to go live when i was on live on youtube and all the other channels all at once because I can't keep going live over and over again on all these different platforms. I got to find a way to, you know, get the information out there uh, as as efficient as I possibly can because it just takes too many hours. Talking like this takes a lot of hours. That's why my workshops and my classes are like seven, eight hours, 10 hours. We've done a, the last time I did a one, it was 11 hours. All right. It's just a lot of time. So, um, Everyone check out the link in the caption of the video up there on YouTube. I'm going to catch you guys later. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. I hope you learned something amazing. And don't forget uh, to register for the special Emerald Tablet workshop that I'm doing in just a couple of weeks. It's going to be life changing, a life changing event. You got a slight taste of the knowledge. I mean, I just gave you, I mean, a slight taste. It's not even, it's like putting one tiny grain of sugar on the tip of your tongue what i have and when i go over this thing and for four hours is potent it's going to be a potent potent night all right so i'm looking forward to sharing that with everyone and i'll see y'all soon all right guys over here on TikTok, um i'm gonna close this